Hello and thank you for watching the first lesson of chapter 5, which is 5.1 Binary Number Systems. Binary and IPv4 addresses. Now, binary number systems, they consist of zeros and ones only. And these are called bits. Now, computers, end devices, servers, routers, switches, all the nodes on the network, when they communicate or anything that you really see on the digital is zeros and ones. And we need to know how to convert these zeros and ones into hexadecimal and into decimal. So for example, as you can see it in the screen, this address is an IPv4 address of this device. It's all zeros and ones at 32 zeros and ones, 32 bits. And you know that IPv6 has 128 bits, so that will be even more zeros and ones. And then we need to learn how to convert binary into decimal. Not this big number, so I don't need to convert this as it is into decimal, but if you put it in the calculator, it will convert it into this address. So real IPv4 address in 32 bits, if you convert it into decimal as it is, it will become 3,232,238,090. But we don't need to convert the whole thing because that would be crazy if I just named IP addresses as they are 32 bits. So for that reason, the IPv4 address is being divided into four octets. For us, the computers, they still see this. They don't see it div divided. But for us, we divide it into four different octets, right? And each octet has eight bits, that's a byte. And then it's easy for us to convert the eight bits into decimal. So for example, if I convert this, that will become, or that eight bit, that will become 192. So the numbers can range anything from zero up to 255 maximum. Now we need to learn about binary positional notation. For example, binary positional notation, it just means that a digit represents a different value depending on the position the digit occupies in the sequence of numbers. So for example, for radix of 10 is for decimal. And we know that anything that we put here is the unit of ones, then tens, one hundreds, and one thousands. So without insulting your intelligence, if I put number 1, 2, 3, 4 here, you would know that that's 1,000, because that digit represents thousands. That re digit represents hundreds, so 234. So 1,234. Well, th well, the idea on the binary is the same, right? As long as you know what whatever the positional notation is, then it's easy to convert, which we're going to see it very soon, yeah? Now, for example, the binary is in power of 2, right? So for example, we have the column here. We have to, to exhaust every different combination in one column before we move to another column. So for example, if we have a binary a decimal, so we have 0, 1, 2, and all the way up to 9. So we used every different combination on this column before we move to the next column, because that's it. There's no any other numbers. So we have to go to, then we start again the next one and so on until we exhaust all different possibilities and then we go to 100 and so on in the binaries like that we have the column here the first column the zero and one there's no any other combination that we can have so we have to move to the next column to move to continue adding numbers so we have the one zero and so on you can see when we have zeros everywhere and just one here for example this represents two this represents four if I put the bit here, that represents 8, and so on, right? Now, converting from binary to decimal, it's very easy as long as we remember these positional values here, right? So you need to remember these, write them down somewhere, even in the exam, before you take the exam, you write these in the piece of paper first, and then you take the exam, because you might need to do some conversion. But anyway, the binary is in power of 2, so 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power 1 is 2. 2 to the power 2 is 4. And that's like saying 2 times 2, yeah? That's 4. That's 2 to the power 2. 2 to the power 3 is 8. That's like saying 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And 2 to the power of 4 is 16. That's like saying 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, eight times 2 is 16. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So that just says how many times you have to do 2 times 2. So if I do 2 to the power of 5, that's like 2 times 2, 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, another times 2 is 32. Just continue like that. Yeah. So it's easy to convert. As long as we know this table on the top, it's easy to convert to decimal. 
because all you have to do is add the ones wherever the ones are represent so if I add you number if I give you number for example zero zero one zero one one zero one let's just say that I'm just picking up this these digits so this is the 8-bit binary which we need to convert it into decimal we ignore the zeros so ignore this ignore this this bit here this represents 32 so we have to keep that in mind ignore the zero this bit here represents 8 so 32 and 8 that's 40 and this bit represents 4 so that's 44 and then ignore the 0 and 1 that's 45 so the binary 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 is 45 okay if I give you another example for example 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 all right now to convert this to decimal all we have to do is ignore the zeros and add the ones this bit here represents 64 so 64 plus this bit represents 32 that's 96 so it's 96 so far we ignore the zeros we go to 4 here this bit here represents 4 so 96 and 4 is it's 100 plus this bit represents 2 that's 102 yeah so let's take another example so for example if I take 1 1 uh, 0 0 0 0 1 1 right again I'll ignore all the zeros and this one represents 128 this one represents 64 so that's 128 plus 64 192 ignore all the zeros this represents 2 so 192 plus 2 194 plus this one represents 1 this is 195 and the digits the minimum can be all zeros which will be 0 and if I put all ones if I set them all to 1 I have to add them all and then gives us a number which will be 255 that's the maximum but 128 plus 64 is 192 plus 32 is 224 plus 16 is 240 plus 8 248 plus 4 252 plus 2 254 plus 1 255 so the minimum conversion is in 8 bit octet is from 0 to 255 now we need to convert from decimal into binary and that's easy as well you just need to subtract stuff so for example if I give you a number say 200 right I'll start with 200 255 is the maximum yeah you can give any number it doesn't matter so 200 now we have to look at the leftmost binary bit and if we see it if it's equal to the target or smaller than target if it's equal to or smaller than target we put 1 which is true 128 is smaller than 200 that's our target so I'll put 1 there but because I put 1 there I have to subtract 128 from our target right which will be for example 2 and there will be 72 left now we move to the next column which is 64 again if it's smaller than our target or equal to we put 1 which is true 64 is smaller so we put 1 there we have to subtract 64 from our target which will leave us with an 8 now the next column is 32 32 it's bigger than our target of 8 so we put 0 there 16 is bigger than target so we put 0 there 8 is equal to our target our new target so we put 1 there so 8 minus 8 that will leave you with 0 so the rest will be 0 so 200 for example it will be 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 if I take another another example so let me just take a um, wipe these and I'll take another example so for example um, I'm not even thinking this I'm just picking up from my head yeah um, so let's say 80 it doesn't really matter any number 80 now we look at the law the biggest number which is 128 the leftmost binary bit in the octet 128 128 is bigger than our target so we put zero there then we move to the next column which is 64 64 is smaller than our target so for that reason we put one there and then we have to subtract 64 from our target to get to get new target so that would be 16 we are left with 32 is bigger so we put 0 16 is equal to so we put 1 so 16 minus 16 will be 0 and so the rest will be all zeros so 80 for example it will be zero one zero one and four zeros 
and I'm gonna take one more example and then we can move on so let's just take example um, say 240 no I don't want to take 240 because then it will just be easier um, let's let's take one two three doesn't really matter one number one two three now one two three for example we look at the highest number one two eight one two eight is bigger than one two three so for that reason we put zero there 64 however is smaller than one two three so I'll put one there but I have to reduce 64 or subtract 64 from the target to get the new target so see that will be for example 9 5 so 59 left so the new target is 59 now we'll go to the next column which is 32 32 again is smaller than our new target so we put one there so we have to subtract the 32 from our target so that will leave us with 7 with 27 16 is smaller than our target so we put one there so we have to subtract 16 from our target to get the new target which will be left with 11 8 again is smaller so we put one there so we go 11 minus 8 and that will leave us with 3 4 is bigger so we put 0 and and then we left 2 is smaller so we put 1 there so 3 minus 2 we get 1 and then 1 so 1 2 3 is 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 okay I don't know if I said it correctly but it's 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 <laughs> okay Now IPv4 address structure again like I said to you um, IPv4 is divided into is 32 bit and uh, IPv6 is 128 bits but IPv4 is divided into four octets that's true IPv4 as a computer see it that's how we have divided so we can convert that into that um, and that's you remember 128 and 64 that's 192 this is 128 and uh, 32 160 and 8 168 and that represents 8 and that represents 2 so 10 and the same thing again 10 so it's very important for you to be able to understand these two number system well binary and decimal you already know binary and hexadecimal which will be in the next video thank you for watching lesson 5.1 binary number system this is of chapter 5 number systems please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been Astrid Krasnici bye bye